Hello everyone, Dawn Takis here. Thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my sewing room. I was a pattern maker and a seamstress for decades. I owned a sewing factory and I created the Streamline Seamstress channel to help you, teach you tricks and hacks and things that I learned in all my years to help you streamline your sewing so that you could be more efficient, sew faster, save time, money, and energy. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make this gorgeous Mobius scarf. And I love the clean line of this. Um, and today we're gonna to make it in a plaid so I can show you how you can symmetrically line up your plaid so that you have a gorgeous gift that you can give to anyone. The cost on this is going to be mm, probably around five dollars and about 10 or 20 minutes of your time. So if you're in for that stay tuned I'm going to show you how to make this. We're actually going to do three videos on three different ways that you can make this scarf and today the first one this is just the basic it goes really fast so all right let's do this let's get to the cutting table and I'm going to show you how to make this beauty. So first realize that the camera is not going to be able to pick up everything that I'm going to show you today. So I'm just going to do my best to explain it to you as I go. Now I've made a couple scarves out of this purple already. And so I have uh, about, a, about a yard of this left. And this is the selvage edge. This is at the end of the bolt or the width of the fabric. And that is also the direction that my lines are going for my scarf. And so to cut the scarf, we want to cut it 18 inches wide. But the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a nice clean cut on the length. And what I mean by that is because we have a fabric where the design is woven, we can use that to our advantage and actually cut ourselves a nice clean line. So I'm going to just choose this black line here and I'm going to use my scissors to cut that. I'm going to do that for you really quickly. And as you can see, I'm getting a nice, I want to keep everything nice and flat. I can use one of my fabric weights. Those fabric weights become like a third hand. And you can see how nicely that's cutting for me and create, creating a nice clean edge. Most fleece fabrics are somewhere around 50 wide. They're going to be 45 to 55 I think that in most cases, some might even go to 60. I'm going to measure this one for you so I can tell you exactly what it is. I'm going to leave those salvage edges on there um, and hopefully can you see that. I'm going to leave those salvage, salvage edges there for right now. Right now I just want to really focus on getting symmetrical lines all set up for my scarf. So I've got my tape measure out and I want the total width of my scarf to be 18 inches. So I'm going to use my tape measure. You can use a ruler and I'm going to find the line that is closest to 18 inches and it can be off a little bit. That's fine. So I'm going to use this white line here and I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the straight edge. And I'm just going to verify it again here before I start cutting. And I am going to just go to 18 inches. And again, I'm seeing that white line there and that's where I'm going to just cut straight across with my scissors. You could use a rotary mat and wheel if you like on this, but I think that it's, in this case scenario, it's possibly a more meticulous cut if you're using scissors. And it's really not that difficult because the line is already built in for you. And I'm cutting on the outside of that line so that I have a nice clean cut. And the great thing about this is it creates a nice cut for your next scarf that you're going to be cutting if you're going to do multiples. So this is 18 inches so that you can cut your raw, 
your straight edge on the line of the plaid. I would say probably 20 inches or two thirds of a yard is enough. You could definitely get two scarves out of a yard. Just want to be very meticulous on the lines that you cut so that you can you know, maybe one is 17 and and one is 18. Again, there's a little bit of uh, wiggle room there in those measurements. You do not have to be exact. I think this is coming up at 18 and three quarters. I just decided to choose a line. And I hope the camera's catching this for you. It's a little challenging sometimes to be creating something, teaching how to make it, and doing the camera at the same time. So to all of you out there, I apologize if I go out of frame. And you can see that the fabric is just kind of like wiggling a little bit that way and that's because of the salvage edge but don't don't mind that just keep cutting so that you have that nice clean edge so I'm just going to toss that to the side right now and I'm going to do the same thing with the salvage edge I'm going to find what is a nice clean line and I want this as long as I can possibly make it and so I am going to I'm going to take this black line right here cut off that selvage. And I'm going to use that black line in the grain. In this case, I think it's going against the grain. And I am just going to use that so that I get a nice symmetrical cut on my plaid. And I'm going to roll this up. And I am going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to cut, mm, I think that's a little, a little too close. I'm again, I'm going to go with that black. I like that I can see that very well. Okay, so that will finish cutting the scarf. And the next thing I want you to do is I want you to take both ends and just kind of bring them together on your scarf. I'm just matching them up here, both of those selvage edges. And I'm just going to, kind of like you're doing laundry and you're getting ready to fold it, I'm going to fold that and just find my center. And when I find my center, I'm going to use my rotary mat and wheel. And I'm just going to give it a little notch because I want to be able to know where my center is and that's going to create like a little just a little notch there it's going to be sewn into the seam allowance I just want to know exactly where my center is so if I decide to put that zipper in or just to know my center um, I can use that as a reference so we're going to get started putting this together so the next part of this is going to, I'm going to sew this first one just as an infinity scarf without a zipper. And so this is so easy and because of the pleats, it makes it really easy for us to match up everything. As you can see, I'm just matching up the lines and I, just so that I know everything is nice and symmetrical. And I am going to probably sew this at about a half inch, five eighths of an inch. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Again, um, for a bigger individual, for a man, maybe I would sew it at a half inch for a wider scarf. And then for a petite woman, I might make that same allowance a little bit bigger. But I am using those lines, and I'm hoping that the camera can catch that. I'm using those lines as my guide and fleece does move a little bit, so you want to make sure that you do pin it. Probably every hand, I think, is a good recommendation for new sewers. And if you're unsure of the good side of the fleece, 
um, it's always a little bit more vivid on the good side and just a little bit blurry on the wrong side. So you wanna make sure we're putting the right sides together. I can see how nice and vivid that is. I am lining up and I have my magnetic wristlet. And if you like that and you wanna make one for yourself, I have a video on that. I'll pop the link in for you. I also have a magnetic pin cushion and I love that because it's nice and flat. And as you can see, there's those notches that we cut earlier and it's telling me that everything's lining up beautifully, nice and symmetrical. And I'm just rolling this as I go to save space. Again, uh, it is hard to show you everything in the camera when you're making a bigger item, but you can see we're just matching up those and because we cut this using the lines in the fabric, instead of just cutting it with a rotary mat and wheel, we now have a symmetrical cut. And this is the difference in quality of a garment when someone's making something for someone as a gift or to sell. You can really tell the difference when you see symmetrical lines shaping up. Think of a coach purse that you purchased. And then you can see a knockoff somewhere and you can see that the C's are, they look kind of wonky when it's a knockoff. Um, a very good knockoff, it's hard to tell, but you can see how immaculately everything is placed on a designer handbag so that everything lines up. And that's what we're doing here. We're just taking the time to pin everything and we're just gonna keep rolling Fleece is very easy to sew. And that's one of the joys of making this is that this is gonna go really super fast without the zipper. And then I'm gonna show you how to make one with the zipper pocket. Don't be scared because people are scared of zippers and, and they shouldn't be. All right, so we're ready to go. We're gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna show you how to sew this beauty up. So I'm gonna start by putting in a jersey stretch needle because fleece has a little bit of stretch to it and it just seems to work best and I'm going to again sometimes it's a little bit awkward sewing for you while I'm filming so I apologize if anything looks a little awkward. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to grab my bobbin and just pull that up. I'm choosing this gray color thread. It might be a little harder for you to see and I'm going to apologize for that as well because I want to have a nice flush color in this scarf. So here's the piece that I'm going to just sew at a half inch all the way down. I'm going to lighten my presser foot a little bit because fleece has a tendency to um, slow down the machine a little bit. And so I'm just going to go at five eighths of an inch. And when you're sewing, you want to just use your thread guides and there's usually one right here. You're not looking at the needle, you are looking at your thread guide and I have one right here and I'm just going to keep that at a nice place and I'm going to start by straight stitch, forward, backward to back tack and then I'm just going to keep everything nice and flat, paying attention to my seam allowance and because I put those needles in I'm sorry, this, I put those pins in on a slight diagonal. I can take them out as I go if I want to. I've got my magnetic pin cushion underneath my, my scarf that I'm sewing here. And I also have my wristlet, so I can go with my wristlet. And I just want to make sure I take my time. You could even change the setting on your machine and go a little slower if you want just to make sure that we're getting a nice symmetrical 
5 eighths of an inch line. You could make this scarf out of flannel, make it out of a jersey knit, a stretch chiffon would be beautiful. My intention with this was a Christmas winter scarf. see how many pins the wristlet holds. It holds quite a bit. So you can see I have a beautiful 5 8 of an inch seam with a straight stitch. I'm going to go through and trim that out. I want to just get that bulk out of there. I do not need that notching anymore. That notching was just supposed to help me line everything up so that everything looks beautiful when I turn it right side out. So, And you can use scissors. You can trim your seam allowance with scissors. You could do it with pinking shears, whichever you prefer. I'm going to take this to the rotary mat and wheel and I'm just going to trim that down to a quarter inch and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back to the cutting table and what I did is I used a ruler and a rotary wheel and mat and I just trimmed off the excess on my seam allowance. And I brought it down to a quarter inch. You can also use a serger to clean that up, or you can sew the entire inside seam on a serger if you're more advanced and you have a serger. So now I have my scarf, and again, the camera's not really gonna show you the, well, maybe if I did on diagonal like that, shows you the, the full length of it. From um, here all the way back, this ended up being 60 inches. So I'm going to say that the fleece fabric was probably 60 inches rolled on the bolt. And um, I'm, that's probably standard for most fleece fabrics. Most fabrics are either 44, 45, 55, or 60. This particular bolt that I purchased had to have been 60. Um, and the selvage edge just gives you a little extra some time. But now what I'm going to do to continue this process is we are going to create that twist and I'm just using my hand and I'm just pulling it right side out and when I pull it right side out you can press if you like to press fleece presses nicely you do not need to press but I am again I am going to put my seam in the middle and I am just folding that over and I'm going to put it on a diagonal again so that you can see that, that it's on the diagonal. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist and I want a nice twist in there into my infinity scarf. And what that's going to mean is that we, although we have two seams here, the we are not sewing seam to seam to put this together. We are going to actually be doing the opposite. So what I want to do is find my center on my scarf. So I'm going to find my seam is right here. And then on the opposite side, I want to pin to mark the opposite side center. And that should tell me like where the center is to match up with this seam over here to get started pinning and sewing. So that's going to give me an indication. So now that I've found the opposite of center on one side of the scarf, I'm going to put right sides together and I'm going to just start pinning. 
And we need to leave a little hole here to turn the scarf right side out. And I'm going to say probably four inches is perfect. And I always like to do those pins in opposite direction. I'm going to start a little bit before where these tabs are from the inside seam. I'm going to start right there and I'm going to end right there. And we are going to sew in a tube at a quarter inch all the way around. And things will not line up on as far as the plaid. It would if we did not put the twist in there, but I like the twist and I'm going to explain that to you when I show it on. And I'm just going to continue to sew at a quarter inch starting right before where the center seam is and then just going all the way to where my uh, marking is for three inches to turn this right side out. And just like we did with the first scarf without the zipper, I'm going to take off the attachment that makes it easy for me to sew anything that's on a tube. And I have turned this, putting the right sides together, and I started the pinning. I had flipped it, twisted, just like I did on the first scarf. And so we have a seam to no seam center, and then we have a seam to no seam center. And I'm just going to start stitching here. I have the right sides together. I had already pushed the scarf all the way through, so it's kind of like this, this little bag. Hopefully the camera will catch that. And then we're just going to come right in. And where's my hole? Yeah, I'm going to start the hole right here. So I'm going to just start right here at the end of the hole. And I'm going to sew that at 3 8 of an inch. And again, smaller is always better. And I'm going to use my foot as my seam allowance and just go a few inches at a time. When you're sewing in a circle or in a tube, that is the easiest way to go. This is actually probably easier for you to see than was the first one that I did. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I cut a diagonal on each of those seam allowances just because I wanted to remove a little bit of thickness or bulk there. And I'm coming back around to the beginning. And I'm going to get... I'm going to take all the pins out at once. Here's my beginning. I need about three inches, which is where this blue pin is going to be. I'm going to get over the center. And of course that pin is going to give me a little trouble, isn't it? So we have sewn a tube here and we started and you can see I have an opening that we had deliberately left so that we could pull everything right side out and that's about three inches and it's a small opening you can make it a little bit bigger if you like but smaller means less problems when you go to close it so it takes a little bit longer maybe to turn it right side out but I think in the end it saves you time so as you can see it was just a perfect circle and we just left a little opening there and now I'm going to just really gently start turning my scarf right side out. And again, I hope the camera is catching this. And once you get it started, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to pull right side out. And there we are. And we have this opening that we can deal with. And there's a couple different things that we can do here. I'm going to hand stitch this because that's my preference, but there's also a product that's called Stitch Witchery, and I'm going to show you how to use this in uh, another scarf that we make. Where It's a little piece of tape and it fuses fabric together with an iron, and this actually works. I use this on another, the fringe mass or the fringed 
uh, scarf that I make. So I'm going to show you how to use that. But you can use that as well if you're not a fan of hand sewing. I'm tucking that in at 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to put a couple pins in there. Probably pin the other way would be smarter, right? So that we're not stabbing ourselves as we're going. I love this scarf. I love the simplicity and the classic look of it. So now I am just going to um, get started doing some hand sewing and I'm going to try and zoom in so that you can see. I'm going to just do a slip stitch on this and then that wraps it up. Okay, so this is another one of those. It's hard to get a good camera angle for you, but I am going to do my best here. So I know that the beginning of my seam, I'm going to come in from the inside. And I am right-handed, so I'm actually going the opposite direction. And that is because I am sewing to the camera. I'm showing you how to do this so that I can put my raw edge just in there. And I am just going to pick up a little bit of fabric on one side and a little bit of fabric on the other side and just slip the needle right through. And again, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go back a little bit behind or close to where the last stitch ended. And I am just going to pick up a little bit here and a little bit on the opposite side and then just push the needle through. And same thing, I'm going to go back, here's my thread, I'm going to go back to just behind the thread, and I'm just going to pick up. And the key when you're hand sewing is to just keep everything nice and smooth and even and about the same size so that you don't have stitches that are irregular and slightly bigger or off from others. I'm just going to keep going. I like to hand sew. I think it adds that personal, like, loving touch to something that you're making. You can also, if you really are not a fan of, of hand sewing and you do not want to use the stitch witchery, for all intents and purposes, you could do a straight stitch on the sewing machine right there. And that's the reason I said earlier the smaller this hole is, the better, because that gives you more options of how you can you can close this. Now, this is an outdoor scarf, so this is not something that's going to be going into the washing machine every week. This is something people wear, you know, when they go out and um, they hang it when they come back in, or they put it in the sleeve of their jacket. So. Taking that into consideration, I don't think that you need to uh, be considering that it's something that's going to be washed regularly. And again, I'm multitasking. I'm filming, I'm sewing. Forgive me. I just want to show you that, how that's coming together really nicely. I hope that the camera can see that. And I'm almost finished. And again, I am just going to come back just a little bit behind where I started and just slip my needle through both sides. Back to where I started and then just slip the needle about the same amount of fabric on each side and I'm pulling it tight but not taut or I'm pulling it taut but not tight how's that I don't want to pull it so much that I'm going to cause the seam to gather and the thread to gather to be smaller than the stitches or the fabric that I'm so enclosed and we're almost there oh look you can't even see it can't even see it to the naked eye so in order to seal this off, I'm going to go a little bit longer just to make sure 
I'm going to go into the, the machine stitching part of this and I am just going to give myself just a little tiny knot here so I make sure that everything's sewing up beautifully perfect and I am just going to knot it off carefully and then I'm going to bury that seam underneath and I'm going to trim it about a half inch away and it'll be on the inside of the garment and so now I don't have to to worry about it but so let me show you what this looks like I'm so excited this is one of my favorite pieces you're gonna love what this looks like on and so there it is that is how simple it is to make one of these gorgeous Mobius scarves and this is a little different than an infinity scarf an infinity scarf doesn't have the twist it's just one loop and that twist just makes everything lay beautifully and look fabulous and so if you have learned anything today and you've enjoyed this video be sure to give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so that you can see future videos that we're doing and above all else happy holidays to you enjoy making things for people that you love that um, that they can treasure for all the years of their life so everyone be well thanks for stopping by keep sewing it's good for the soul